everyone. This is Jess from Stellar Tarot. Thank you so much for watching today. Today we are going to be reviewing some of the decks that I intend to really focus on and work with during this summer of 2020. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely find that having a larger deck collection means that at times I will feel like some decks really feel out of season for me and like they don't quite apply to what's going on in the world, like on a physical level, energetic level, all of that kind of stuff. And so I definitely am the sort of person who not only changes out their altar and things on their altar as uh, the seasons go on, but I also feel really drawn to work with different decks during different seasons. For me, summer feels a little bit longer this year, mostly because I have my kids at home with me, um, obviously due to COVID-19 and everything like that. Um, so they've been home since spring break, uh, middle of March, and they will continue to be home until the very beginning of September when school opens up again. And then not only will my two older children go to school, but my youngest will start her first year of kindergarten. So that's very exciting. Um, so yeah, we are going to look at which decks I have chosen to work with this summer. Um, quick disclaimer, you guys chose this video. I threw up two suggestions on my Instagram stories and had you guys vote for it. And so a whopping 90% of you chose this video idea over the other one. If you would like to be a part of selecting certain videos in the future, I definitely intend to continue to use that type of format for helping me decide what most you guys want to see. So please go ahead, find my Instagram down below and follow along with the Instagram uh, journey that I take you on. I don't just do witchy stuff there. This is a disclaimer. That is my Instagram account for everything. I post pictures of my kids, videos of stuff that we get up to. My Instagram stories are as often as not mundane stuff as well as magical stuff. So if you like a mix of things and never really be bored, <laughs> go ahead and check out my Instagram. I also post a lot of pictures of my pets there and like Instagram stories of them. So if you like your daily dose of aww, then you should definitely follow me there. I'm also on Facebook and I also have a SoundCloud which I very badly need to add to um, and sometimes when I'm feeling like it I add to my blog as well so don't be afraid to come and follow me everywhere online I love to have you guys along for the journeys I love comments and I love hearts and all those things definitely helps to encourage me to keep posting on those platforms so yeah go ahead and hit the follow buttons on all of my social media and without any further ado let's get into the video so for today's video, I have three tarot decks and I have three oracle decks. I did not intentionally in choose to balance out the choices. They are just all ones that naturally sort of seem to rise to the top. So yeah, let's, let's take a look. The first deck that I chose is actually one that I really love, but I have not um, shown it on my channel in a long time. I haven't talked about it in a long time, but I still have it, I still love it. It's the Vision Quest Tarot. This is supposedly thought-based. Um, I'm not really sure that I ever really particularly noticed that when I picked this deck up. Um, I find that the keywords on the bottom as well as the imagery that it's on the cards is very helpful in doing the readings. Everything is very colorful and when the cards are not colorful you really get that sense of what's going on in them. Major Arcana names have absolutely been changed as well as um, the suits are elemental rather than uh, based on um, like items but you do have images within the deck that really depict some of the things so for air you have a lot of feathers for earth you have like a lot of these um like vessels these uh, I, I guess sorry for like for water you have a lot of vessels but for earth you have a lot of like plants and ground-based stuff growing things etc um and yeah they're just 
they're, it's a really beautiful deck. Obviously, it is Native American based uh, with a name like the Vision Quest Tarot. You probably figured that out already. And it is an extremely beautiful deck. I really love the imagery in it. I find it's very intuitive to work with. And I love this deck for, especially when I want to feel more connected to my very minute amount of um, Aboriginal ancestry that I have. I feel, um, I've, oft, I've said before that I often feel very conflicted about that part of my heritage because on one hand, the majority of my ancestry is obviously based in white Europeans who came and, and colonized the, the Americas. Um, on the other hand, I also feel very proud about my Aboriginal heritage. So I feel like these two little warring factions inside me often um, vying for a voice. However, I connect the most deeply with like the very ancient aspect of my ancestry, really going back to like ancient Celtic and ancient Norse type of um, ways of living and belief systems. And that is what I try to focus on the most as far as connecting with like my ancestry. So I feel like if you, if you go past the, the Christian colonization part and you focus more on the origins of those peoples and what their sort of way of living life was like. There's a lot of similarities between that and what we now consider to be different aspects of Native American spirituality and things like that. So I try to meld the two together in that way and I think sometimes I'm sort of successful. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really love the Vision Quest Tarot because it really helps me to connect with that side of myself. Um, the Vision Quest Tarot is not Métis based at all. In fact, I believe, if I remember correctly, it's more Navajo based. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there's no deck that is specific to Métis beliefs. So pretty much just any um, Aboriginal deck is where I sort of try to put my... Um, my work into because it's it's better than nothing if you know what I mean. Um, the next deck that I am going to be working with this summer is the Herb Crafters Tarot. I really love this deck but I don't feel like I've worked with it nearly enough to truly understand it. I've had it for only less like just a few months so it's still in a lot of ways very new to me but already very dear to me. I don't do a ton of work with herbs um, as far as making them into medicines or things like that. I mostly just use them dried to make like incenses or I add them into like spell bags or charm bags or things like that. So I am hoping that through using this deck more that I will be get a little bit better at figuring out how to use herbs other than just like to flavor my food and to... Um, you know, to make incenses with. I think there are other things that the herbs could really be good for using, and I think it would be kind of nice to, to do that. I also really feel like this helps to connect me to both my Native American as well as my um, ancient Celtic heritage because it is going back to the land and using stuff from the land to really heal and go inward and go deeper and I would just like to learn a little bit more about that this year. I'm not gonna, I don't feel like I'm gonna come out on the other end of this summer and feel like a total expert in it but I would like to feel like I have a little more knowledge about that stuff under my belt if that makes sense. The final of the tarot decks that I'm going to be working with this summer, it's probably not going to come as a surprise to any of you if you've been watching my channel over the last few months. It's the Forest of Enchantment Tarot by Lunea Weatherstone. Um, yeah. <laughs> does, does the cover not just depict everything that is what I was just talking about with the last few decks? Um, druidic based and um, inspired by like ancient Celtic peoples and medieval peoples and like fey uh, type of um, inspiration and things like that. It's, it's just a beautiful, fantastical, fantastical deck. I really, re I love this card. Oh my God, is she beautiful or what? Um, or he, I don't know, they, 
they are beautiful in my eyes. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to diving deeper into this deck. Ever since it was gifted to me, thank you again, Manuela. Um, I have constantly gone back to using this deck and I'm never disappointed with it. It's very intuitive to work with. It's very pretty. It's very, um, like I said, fantastical. And it just always gives me really good answers without getting too um, feisty. I mean, I do love myself a good darker deck, don't get me wrong, um, but it is really lovely to have something that's really full and green and fertile and feels really alive at the same time. So yeah, I'll be working with the Forest of Enchantment Tarot. Let's move on to the three Oracle decks next, shall we? Ugh! It's it's a load of, of weight on my lap here. This these oracle decks are all in very big heavy boxes so lugging them around if we do go camping or other things like that is it's going to be a challenge i will probably have to pick just like one tarot deck and one oracle to kind of go with me if we do do any traveling this summer um the first is a newer deck to my collection it's actually the i believe the only deck i added to my collection this year um I'm trying to remember because I got the last of the Oracle of Oddities, but was it this calendar year or was it before Christmas? I don't remember. Um, but it's certainly the only one that I can consciously remember adding to my collection this year. And this is the Yggdrasil Norse Divination Cards by Hoker Halderson and G. Hoxtrachir. I've butchered their names. I apologize. I do not speak Icelandic or any sort of um, like Norse or any sort of language. I just, I just don't. Sorry. Um, these cards are really beautifully done. They're all in black and white. The, uh, the book is actually called Bifrost, which I love because it's this idea that the book can help you to, to literally like cross the bridge from working with the card to having an understanding and I think that that name for the book was beautifully chosen. So this is a father and daughter duo. Uh, one has done the artwork, one has uh, really helped to come up with the writing for the book. The book is really thick, it's well done. There's enough information in this book to really give you a good idea of what the card means alongside the, the subtitles of the cards. And then the deck itself is really beautiful as well. I wouldn't say that looking at these images strikes you as being very intuitive. They're very much based in um, the Norse mythology, like the actual myths, and bringing the characters and some of the stories of their mythology to life. This is entirely a black and white grayscale deck. The, these are the card backings. And then each of the uh, cards has a little symbol at the bottom and that tells you which section of the guidebook to look in for it. So uh, some is more about the Dwarven, some is more about some of the other things. So yeah, the, these images are really rooted in um, a lot of traditional Norse artwork as well, which I think is really cool, like this card here. They're not meant to, they, they haven't been brought into the modern world, like the, the modern gaze, as far as how we would expect deities and mythology to be depicted. These are definitely not um, modernized very much in the artwork, which I really appreciate. It really feels more authentic. It feels more like something that you would come across um, on an archeological dig or something like that. It It's really based truly on a lot of the Norse stuff as we would expect the ancient Norse to to really um, appreciate and and recognize their own artwork and figures so I really love this deck um, I'm finding that like some of the the tight the subtitles are really clear some of them seem more um, vague so I definitely love the book with this one especially because I'm not 100% familiar with all of the the Norse mythology stories I know a lot of them sure do I know the details and like some of the 
less well-known figures? No. So I definitely go back to the guidebook with this one a lot. But it's one that I would like to feel far more comfortable with and know a lot better by the end of the summer. So basically when the kids go back to school. So that's the first uh, deck that I, or Oracle deck that I've chosen to work with this year. And so far I'm really loving it. The second deck of choice is one that I work with off and on. Um, I have kind of a on again, off again relationship with this particular Oracle deck. And this is the Mystical Shaman Oracle by um, Albert Villodo, Colette Baron reed and Marcella Lobos. So um, first of all, I have to say, Hay House did an amazing job with the packaging of this deck because you have the outer box, which holds the guidebook on the top and then a ribbon to remove everything. The guidebook I find semi-helpful, by the way, um, but then you have the deck in its actual own box that sits in here, again with the ribbon to take it out. I think that that was really smart because if you don't feel like you need to take the guidebook with you everywhere when you use the deck, you can to choose to just take the cards with you and it's still protected in its own box. I think that's genius and I would love to see far more companies start doing this with their, with their decks, with their packaging. Um, the cards are really beautiful, they're like a matte finish and they are borderless, which I prefer, if, if I was given a choice, all of my decks would be borderless. Um, I have chopped borders off of a number of my decks, and while I don't think that every deck that has a border is offensive, I think a lot of decks would be improved if the artwork actually took up the bulk of the card, and not, you know, with a silly white border. Each of these has a title. Uh, there is a number in the corner of each card just to make it easier to find it in the guidebook because there is no like alphabetical rhyme or reason to it. Um, and each of the cards is really beautiful. It's based very much around um, like Aboriginal belief systems and shamanic belief systems from basically the Americas specifically is where I see the most of it. You see a lot of um, Aboriginal looking faces. You see a lot of um, what we would typically call like neo-shamanic terms like the lower worlds and other things like that. Um, there are the odd like true white faces of people but for the most part the faces look like they could be um, aboriginal peoples from either north or south or central americas they have a darker tone to them their hair is mostly dark brown or black um, they look like these cards were really inspired by uh, people who have their roots in this um, particular neck of the woods i really love these cards um, I think that it really combines a lot of um, like neo-pagan knowledge and belief systems along with a lot of like aboriginal and shamanic belief systems and I really like it. I know not everyone loves this deck, um, however Albert Velodo is a modern shamanic practitioner so I can really appreciate um, his take on things. I've read a couple of his books before and really love what he's written. So um, Colette Baron reed this is the only deck that I own from her. I've had one or two of her other ones before or at least seen them. Don't love her. Don't love most of her work. But I think she did a pretty good job of helping to create the guidebook for this deck putting things into words that uh, maybe other people would really struggle to um, to articulate. I really liked how she helped this particular deck really come to life, um, both in terms of like how the artwork has come together along with the words that are in the guidebook. However, most of the time I skip the guidebook. Uh, I've also read a lot of books on shamanism in the past especially in the last like five years or so, I've read a lot. So I, I don't feel like I really need a whole lot of extra help to understand the meanings behind the cards because I've already really done that digging. The last deck that I'm really planning to dive in deep with 
for this summer is the Spirit of Nature Oracle. This is illustrated by Will Worthington and the booklet has been done by John Matthews, who is very well known within the druidic circles of um, books and things. He's a very well-known, distinguished author and I believe a member of Obod. So he's really done like a lot of research on uh, druidism, both ancient and modern druidry. The guidebook for this deck pulls out beautifully. I don't love, love the inside of this. It's a pull-out tray with the plastic thing to keep the cards in. It's not my favorite. It works. Um, the deck is beautiful. I mean, Will Worthington is incomparable when it comes to other artists of this type of work. He is incomparable. His level of detail of getting like the faces into the to the trees, but also still having them look entirely realistic. It is mind boggling to me. He's also the artist behind one of my all time favorite decks, the Wildwood Tarot, which I will probably also work with a ton this summer because I work with that deck tons year round, period. Um, the guidebook is really well done. There's a lot of information for each card, including like the actual OM symbol, uh, how the name, like the Latin name for the tree, and then um, divinatory meaning, lore for the tree, and then some little bits uh, extra about it. Um, the only thing that I have to say is lacking in this particular book is it does not tell you how to pronounce the uh, Gaelic names of the trees. That you can find if you have, um, what is it? It's by Charlene Hidalgo. I think it's uh, like the book of tree or the, the book of tree wisdom or something like, I can't remember. Um, I'll throw it down in the description below. That book is great as well. That one does tell you how to properly pronounce all of the Gaelic terms that are in this book. I really wish, like, it, I just think it would have been so easy just to throw underneath in brackets, um, you know, pronunciation. Like, if you're going to put something in a book that has, that comes from a different language, I think it's really important to give credence to that and not only tell the person which language it is in, but also to, um, you know, let them know how to pronounce them. Now, I'm just taking a look to see if the, the pronunciations was put like in a short form within the guidebook, but I don't think that it was. I'm just double checking though before I really paint myself into a corner. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Um, which is really a shame. I really think that it's a shame uh, that that wasn't put in here. Uh, it's such an easy thing to have added. It would not have taken up a lot of space in the book, and I think it would have been extremely useful. That one complaint aside, the actual deck is stunning. It's beautiful. As you can expect from Will Worthington's art, it is absolutely stunning. It is detailed. It is amazing to look at and to behold. There is an element of the realism without losing that element of the magic and the fantasy alongside it. If you are looking for a good OM deck that's mass produced that you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for, this would be the top of my recommendation list for an OM deck. I just think that it is... Compared to all the other OM decks that I have, and I've had a couple of others, uh, this is the best one to me. It's just, it's so far, it's been the best as far as the book that it comes with as well as the artwork. It's, it's beautiful. And that, people, concludes my uh, list of decks that I intend to work with uh, for the most part this summer. I definitely cannot tell you that it would just be confined to those six decks. Uh, I do obviously when I read for other people I work with other decks specifically if they've purchased things like shadow work or messages from the Morgan readings there are certain decks that I use all the time for those. 
Um, and like if you purchase like get your goddess on reading with me like it's going to be all goddess based decks it's not going to be these ones these are more for my personal practice so I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video if you did give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and if you would like to see other videos like this from me and get notified when I upload make sure you hit that notification bell and that will just give you a little pop-up notification on your phone to let you know that I have uploaded again. My upload schedule is every Sunday and Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but of course once in a while things get thrown off on that, and hey, every once in a while I throw in a random bonus video too, so keep your eyes on that. Also, if you'd like to stay informed about what's going on with me, my business, behind the scenes stuff, and sometimes get free goodies or bonus promotional um, sales and things like that for my products, then make sure that you go to my website, stellartarot.ca, and sign up for the newsletter. I would love to have you guys follow along with that as well. And until next time, guys, please take care of yourselves and be wise, be brave, and be magical. Bye.